Hey everyone, Tim Anderson here, aka Renfail, and welcome to the next episode in my ongoing series of book reviews. Uh, next up on the chopping block is uh, The Paradise War by Stephen R. Lawhead, which is the first book in the Song of Albion trilogy. Um, if you've never heard of Stephen R. Lawhead before, um, he's not a, I don't think he would be known as like a best-selling author, but he's been around a long time. He's been writing books since I want to say the early 80s. Um, I'm familiar with him because uh, his books were on the approved reading list by my family uh, when I was growing up um, as a youngster because he was considered a Christian author, even though I wouldn't really consider his novels to be religious in any sense of the word. It's just kind of like, you know, Narnia and and The Lord of the Rings both have religious overtones because of the beliefs of those authors. Uh, Stephen Lawhead's work is very similar, so his books are or typically, or at least back in the day, they used to be sold primarily in like Christian bookstores and stuff. So um, when I was growing up, I was familiar with him because uh, he wrote fantasy and science fiction that that was considered PG, and therefore I could get into it. But um, I have very fond memories of this book. I have not read it since the late 90s, probably. Um, and so I decided this was the next thing I wanted to re read on my Kindle. If this is your first time tuning into my channel, do me a favor and subscribe. Hit the bell icon so you get updates for all the future content I do around this YouTube space. There's more than just book reviews, so make sure you dig in. Uh, check it all out. There's lots of playlists. Do the Lotro Cooking Real Life Show, gaming videos, review videos, Mondays and MMORPGs, my Monday musings, personal vlog, and a bunch of other stuff. So check it all out. And, of course, if you like this video and you want to know more, drop a comment in the description text below join our discord as well links are all below if you want to hang out and do that kind of stuff so uh this will be a um you know i'll try to split it up i guess like i did the mistborn reviews i'm still new to reviewing books so i i, I i'm kind of been separating things into you know the first half of the video is not spoiler ish and then the second half of the video is somewhat spoiler ish so let's just talk about the overall you know book itself um this came out in 1991 i was 11 years old when this came out and i have distinct memories i remember we were going on some sort of a road trip and i think we were going to the st louis zoo i could be wrong on that but i bought this in springfield missouri in my hometown where i grew up and was born and I remember going into the bookstore and seeing this book and I had already read his um, some of his other stuff uh, particularly uh, the at that point I had read the Dragon King trilogy which was like his first fantasy series uh, that he had written and that had come recommended and I may or may not have read his pen dragon cycle at this point that I don't remember but I know I had read the um, I'm pretty sure it was only the 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 Dragon King trilogy at that point. So I was familiar with him. I saw this book for sale. Um, I asked my mom and she gave, gave me some money and I bought this book in hardcover. And I also distinctly remember that the second and third book were the first two books that I ever pre-ordered um, at our local bookstore. We were in the town where I lived at the time, which was called Marshfield, Missouri. I'm going back in the day to the boonies. Um, one of the ladies at our church had a local bookstore and I pre-ordered the second and third book so this series for me was something that I got into pre-teens and into my teenage years because the first book came out in 91 the second one came out in 92 and the third one came out in 1993 so right as I was hitting my teenage years this series was there um, the paradise work got, it got me right away when I was a kid and, and coming back and rereading it that same sense of adventure was there because it starts off in the real world um, the guy who is the main character, Lewis, is a graduate student at Oxford, and he is uh, studying Celtic archaeology. And he is an American abroad, um, you know, busted his butt to get there. And his roommate is this wealthy, you know, aristocratic um, kind of asshole friend who comes from money, uh, but it's his roommate. And as they're reading the morning paper, they see something that... Um, is, is basically it's one of those tabloids like you know alien you know mother gives birth to alien baby with seven heads that kind of thing and his friend sees this this caption and this really grainy photo of this this aurox i hope i'm pronouncing that right um a, a beast that hasn't been seen in england in centuries 
and gets it in his head that we're going to go off and, and we're going to go take a look at this ourselves this weekend. And they go off on this adventure and um, get to the place and find the farm where the beast was found. And, um, you know, there's some hiking involved. They find a, a carn um, circle of stones. And, and as they are investigating, um, his friend Simon goes into the um, carn and, and disappears which leaves Lewis freaked out and, you know, spends the next few weeks trying to figure out what to do and eventually gets led to a strange and mysterious um, uh, professor who lets him know that, hey, you know, yeah, uh, the, the world of the fairies is real. The other world is real. Um, and it is this world full of druids and magic and, and all this other stuff. And of course, Lewis doesn't believe him, but over the course of the adventure, he finds himself going back to that place, finds the portal, ends up in this other world, and then spends the rest of the book. Um, you know, he finds his friend, Simon, and tries to convince him to come back, but that doesn't necessarily work out as he wants. And then he goes on this grand adventure where um, he is basically dealing with some very tropey stuff going on in the other world um in the sense that there's you know the the magical barrier has been you know ruined between the two worlds and that's why there's some bleed over and they were able to cross over and the beast was able to cross over into our world um there's a you know the the main druid has gone missing and he's the one who knows the song of albion and the song of albion is what protects the realm from the evils of the underworld and of course that uh, that issue crops up and of course we have evil stuff creeping into the world um, and then the main hero lewis has to figure out how to help out with that problem and of course solve that problem so you know on its, at its face value it is a very simplistic um tropey fantasy novel of a guy from our world going to a fantasy world and solving the main problem for that fantasy world and helping defeat the big bad guy. Um, that's the main kind of core of what this book is about. So I wouldn't, you know, if you're, if you're going to be coming into this, you know, I, you know, I hadn't read this in 20 years and I remember being just absolutely enamored with this book series when i was a kid i mean it this is what inspired me to want to become a celtic archaeologist myself i had these ambitions when i was like 14 i was like i'm gonna go to the university of aberdeen and i'm gonna study archaeology and i'm gonna be like stephen lawhead i mean this guy really did influence me a lot when i was growing up in terms of you know the, the type of writing he did historical fiction and stuff um He's also done some science fiction, which is really good. I don't know if I'll read those or not again, but we'll see. In any case, um, but coming back and rereading this as an adult with 20 more years of experience behind my belt, or actually like 30 years of more experience now, um, uh, there's a lot. There's a lot of like just bad like I said, tropey stuff going on in this book that I didn't know about when I was a kid because I hadn't read that much. Um, coming back to it so many years later, um, you have that. Um, you know, there's the big bad guy that no one knows how to face except for the hero, um, and then him kind of being the savior of this other realm um, and, and, and becoming a hero. It's, it's very much the same story of Narnia. Um, except instead of four kids, it's just one guy. Um, so, you know, it, but it's been, we've seen it before. Um, but it is a fun read. And what makes it um, unique is the sense that it has a very um, Celtic spin on things. So there's a lot of uh, Celtic language. You've got a lot of the Gaelic in there. You've also got a lot of symbology. Um, there's a lot of sort of the bardic traditions and the bards are set up and the the bards are set up like druids um and they have their magical powers which somewhat relate to the staffs that they use and different types of wood and do different things um so there's some interesting fantasy elements going on with magic and, and things of that nature but there's also just the very basic threat of a 
big evil bad guy from the underworld that has broken out because the magical barrier is no longer there and they have to figure out how to restore it. So that part of it's, you know, I'm not, I'm not spoiling too much um, by saying that stuff. But now let's get into the spoilery stuff. So I'll give you a couple of minutes here. Spoilery stuff. Um, you know, some of the things that really that really drive me nuts is, is the sense that um, by the end of the book, you know, the whole the whole the whole sub story of the book is him going to the other world and trying to convince his friend to come back with him. Of course, his friend doesn't want to go back because in the real world, he was a bored rich kid who had everything handed to him on a silver platter. And he just that was a boring life to him. And in this new world, he has set himself up as the, you know, big bad ass kind of warrior who works for the prince. And of course, his friend is this arrogant asshole who who whose ideas are from our era. So this 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 sort of corruption comes in to the other world because of his friend and so it sets this immediately up to where it's it's our guy is the good guy and his friend is the bad guy influencing all the other people to be bad and that sub story kind of gets lost somewhere you get like the first third of the book it's all about lewis getting to the other world and and then getting there and trying to convince his friend to go away right away and then realizing that that's not gonna happen and so he's gonna become you know he's gonna get trained as a warrior and then we go on the second arc of the book which is the story of lewis becoming a celtic warrior over the course of like eight years so i mean it's a chunk of time that takes place between him like going to the island and and, and training and everything else and the one thing that i don't really like about this book that i don't didn't remember from when i was growing up was how the romance that happens between lewis and the other character gwen i think is her name um it just happens like there's no courtship it's just like one day he's there training and she's one of the three daughters and then one chapter they're suddenly in love and it was like wait a second how did that happen because it's like it's not explained at all how that relationship blossomed it was like what because it really that part really drove me nuts um the story arc um one of the things that, that, that you have to deal with with lawhead is his writing style is very simplistic it's fast paced very fast paced um but it is very simplistic and he's not going to spend a ton of time on details and stuff it's just gonna it's gonna constantly move you forward which makes for a good paced read like looking at sanderson as an example it took me um like three weeks for each one of the mistborn novels right and this obviously is much shorter. I think this is like a 130,000 word novel. I read it in like, I don't know, four or five days. It was just, it was a, it's a page turner. It's because it doesn't have a lot of depth and detail to it. You're just, you know, you're following the story and there's lots of action and stuff going on. I, I do feel that um, there is some oversimplification of some things as you go through. Like I said, you don't get the, ex the relationship explained. There's also this big bad guy that appears from the underworld just, he gets thrown into the book into the third section and it just kind of, it's kind of haphazardly thrown in there. I felt like, like there is a backstory to it. That's kind of a legend and myth. And then suddenly it's just there, but it's like this whole concept of the, the head bard um, being lost or, you know, whatever has happened to him. And that's the reason why the song is no longer being sung. So that magical barrier is gone. And suddenly this guy come out from the underworld um, eh, it's very generic as far as a as fantasy story goes. Um, and there's not a lot of detail given into Nud is his name, the big bad guy. He only shows up like at, I think the third to last chapter is when you finally meet him and the whole battle against him takes a matter of a handful of pages and it's over and it's just them throwing magical rocks at him. And, and eh, it felt very simplistic in terms of the way they resolved that whole issue and then you get to the very end and it's like he there's so much crammed into like the last chapter um where you think something else is going to happen and then all of a sudden all of a sudden it's it's um lewis 
forcing Simon and being like, it's time to go back to our world now, even after we've been living here for eight or nine years. You must go back. It's your responsibility to go back to the real world because you've corrupted this world. And that all sort of takes place in the very last chapter and then comes back to our world and he stumbles out of the out of Karn and, and realizes that um, Simon didn't come with him. Like he thought they both went through and he didn't. So then he turns right back around and jumps back in. And that's the end of the first book. And so there's just this whole like frantic thing going on over the last, you know, three to five chapters where everything just like was a nice pacing leading up to the last few chapters. And then bam, 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 all this stuff happens. So at the end of the day, if I had to give this book a review as an adult coming into this as a 41 year old versus an 11 year old, uh, I would give this a three out of five, maybe 3.5 out of five. It's highly enjoyable. Um, very good. Like it's a fun read, but the simplistic nature of the writing, the fantasy tropes, some of the plot elements that aren't explained well enough, some of the pacing at the end. Um, it's just, you know, this isn't like the best book you're ever going to read, but it is a fun read. And it does sort of set you up for the rest of the series, which I actually, in my mind, as I'm remembering, I remember the second and third books being way better than the first book, and I'm going to be finding that out shortly because I'm going to be starting the second book tonight and diving into these, so you'll want to stick around for that. Um, in the meantime, don't forget to follow along and subscribe to this channel if you haven't already done so. Hit the bell icon so you get updates for all the future stuff we do, and check the links below if you want to join over at Discord, hang out with us there. Otherwise... Let me know in the comments below if you've read this, if you want to read it, if you want to know anything about the author or this book series. And then let me know when you finish reading it yourself if you do. Until next time, everybody, stay safe out there.